Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be talking about 10 books that I'm hoping to read in 2021. Almost said 2020, but no, that year is dead and gone, we hope. I had a list of 10 books last year and I don't even think I made a video on it, but I put it in my reading journal and I think I literally read one of them. So not a very successful situation, but I did read 82 books in 2020. So I still read a whole bunch, just not what I said I would. So I thought I'd give it another go, try to pick out 10 more books, see if I could do it. I would be cute like some other people and do the 21 books I want to read in 2021, but I can't be cute like that because if I couldn't even read but one of the 10 books that I chose last year, who's gonna say I'm gonna read 21? Let's just go ahead and get into it, okay? So the first one on this list is A Loveless by Alice Oseman. Now I've read Heartstopper of all volume one and two and three and loved them. I also really loved Radio Silence by this author. The Heartstopper books are graphic novels and just the cutest little romance ever and it was just announced that it's going to be a Netflix show. Is it a show or a movie? I don't know but it's also going to be written by Alice Oseman so I have really high hopes for that. This was a book that came out last year and it had a lot of good reviews. I saw a few bad things saying some of the identities in here might have not been represented in the best way. So we're just gonna have to see how that goes. But this book, the basic premise is a girl named Georgia who's in college. She is asexual, aromantic, and pretty much just her journey in university as an asexual person. She's never been kissed, never been in love, and she's just, you know, she don't know what she's doing. And I, I don't really know what this is gonna be about. Like it's contemporary, I'm sure. Lots of drama and tragic things will probably happen to this main character, just knowing how freaking contemporaries go. But I'm excited. I don't think I've ever read a book with a main character who is asexual and I definitely feel like that is an identity that is not touched on very often. I might be wrong but I think the author is asexual as well and she said this was like a really personal experience writing this book so I'm definitely interested to see if this book is good. I hope it is. Next book that I really freaking want to read that has been on my shelf forever is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Now, I love Marissa Meyer. I loved her Luna Chronicles series. I've read them twice and, you know, I found them in middle school. One of my favorite YA series, one of the first ones I ever read. So, she has another series, I guess the Renegades series. I don't know if there's a different name for it, but it's a trilogy and it's like superheroes. I believe like it's a hate to love situation where the freaking bad superhero and the good superhero are having a relationship, but they don't know who each other are. Like they don't realize that they're on opposite ends of the story like they're supposed to be enemies random fun facts but i remember that there's like a character in here that doesn't sleep like she has the ability to not sleep honestly that sounds really freaking good i love sleeping and i love disappearing from my life sometimes in sleep but if you could just like delete being tired and like snap your fingers and fall asleep when you feel like it and wake up when you want to oh my god because legit, I am always tired. You'd have so much more time to do things. Like, this is how I felt about Edward in Twilight because he would be creepy and, like, stare at Bella while she slept, which was really weird. But I would just think about, like, dude, you have, like, so many things you could do. Like, you have the full 24 hours every day. And that sounds like a lot. But if you could sleep when you want to, it doesn't matter. I went on a rant for no reason. I am trying to be chill in this vlog because it's midnight and I don't want to go too in depth. So leave me alone. I do know it's just about chaos. What is the freaking word when there's no government? Oh my God, I'm so stupid. Anarchy. Like I think this is like an anarchy situation. Like everything's crazy. There's the superheroes on the good and bad side. I've just heard so many people say it that it's just so freaking good and I need to experience that as well. I own the first and the second one. So I'm already prepared. So I'm gonna have a few books on this list that are like final books in a series. I'm so bad at reading the last books in series sometimes. Like I read the first two or the first three and I don't read the last one. A book that I really freaking need to read. It's it's been like over a year. 
maybe two. I don't know. A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. This is the third one in the A Darker Shade of Magic series or the Shades of Magic series. I remember very vividly what happened in the first two, even though it's been probably almost two years since I finished the second one. I'm ready to pick this up. I think I just been really not feeling like reading big books. So I keep reading contemporaries, not because I'm in the mood for contemporaries, because fantasy is my favorite genre, but contemporaries are normally pretty short and literally I just feel so much satisfaction when I read a whole bunch of books and I'm able to do that when I read contemporary instead of fantasy. When I read a book like this it takes me forever. It takes weeks and weeks. I have to set out time to do it and I just started another semester of college. Who knows when this is going to happen. Maybe the summer would be the perfect time because I can be free of schoolwork and ready to read something huge like this. It is an adult fantasy trilogy. It's really slow going. Like it's a slow burn series but it really all comes together and it's just so satisfying. You fall in love with the characters, the magic, and the story. It's just crazy. The whole idea behind this is there's like four different Londons. They're alternate universes and our main character, Kel, he is one of two people who can actually travel to all four. He's kind of like a messenger between all four London slash worlds. Whoa, why is my neighbor driving his car at midnight? <laughs> so he has connections with all of like the monarchy and he talks to all of them and he also has magic. I mean, he should have magic if he's able to travel between worlds. This gets him in trouble when he accidentally comes across somebody from one of these Londons that is not the one he's from. This London has no magic. Now, I think this girl that finds him that freaking steals something from him wants to get out of her London. Like she's over that shit. So it's Lila and Kel. It's such an adventure and I love those two characters and their dynamic together and it's not like a romance I don't think I don't know if it becomes a romance in this or anything but it's really like more of a friendship and maybe possibly a romance in the future but I wouldn't care either way next book I am super excited for is A Legend Born by Tracy Dion I really want to read this one especially because it is set in North Carolina and it's set at a university that I've been to several times like it's really close to me it's University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. The main character is going to this freaking college. I believe it's like a King Arthur sort of twist. She comes across some sort of secret society and a whole world of magic. So it's definitely urban fantasy and literally did not need to know more other than literally somewhere I know and have been to magic and supporting a North Carolina author, a black author, and just literally look at the cover. <laughs> As soon as I saw the cover, I was interested. And then I read the description. I read it about the author and I was like, okay, this is for me. I'm not even that big into King Arthur. I did like that movie. Like, what was it? Like Avalon High. I was kind of trash for that when I was younger, but that's really my only experience. I read the Guinevere Deception. I didn't really like that book. I haven't really had a good experience other than Avalon High with freaking King Arthur. So maybe this will change it. Honestly, I have no interest in King Arthur shit. <laughs> Make me love King Arthur, Tracy. Next one I really need to read is actually another sequel, A Dream So Dark by L.L. McKinney. This is the second one to A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney, and I believe the third one is coming out in 2021, so I'm trying to keep it going. I read the other one a few months ago, and I just want to keep reading them so I can stay in the loop. It's like Alice in Wonderland retelling, obviously, but it kind of gives me Shadowhunters vibes, like the Cassandra Clare books, Shadowhunters, because this main character, Alice, she is like fighting monsters in the real world and there's like a way that she can go into Wonderland. One day she comes across someone who is from Wonderland and they start to train her and teach her how to kill these monsters that escape Wonderland and try to kill the humans. So she's supposed to protect the humans from these monsters from Wonderland. So that definitely gives me vibes of like Shadowhunters and I think that's why I like it so much and I really do think that fans of Cassandra Clare and like Shadowhunting would appreciate these books because it definitely gives me that vibe vibe. Also the main character I believe is bisexual. It didn't really come about in the first one but everybody says it. The author says it so I think it's going to be like a bigger thing in this book and I'm always here for the gays. I'm always here. So I'm so excited for that and I actually read the first one and I felt a little bit of an inkling between her and this female character and I was like wait is she gay? <laughs> I was like, yes. Because there was a little bit of a romance with that dude and I was like, no, I just don't feel this. I feel it with this other person and I'm excited to see if I'm right 
about this ship because I feel the vibes. I feel the chemistry sizzling under the surface. So we'll find out together. The next one is one that I... <sighs> I just had like a freaking ribbit in my throat. You probably didn't hear it and catch it on camera, but it literally was like, uh. like disgusting. The next one is a book like people are obsessed with. They either hate this book or freaking love it. So either way, there's passion involved with this book, hatred or love. I think I'm going to be one of the ones to absolutely love it. There's just no doubt in my mind. Like there just has to be something, even if it's just a four stars, like I think I'm going to really enjoy my time reading this book. It's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I just realized I have two V.E. Schwab books here. This one has such a cool premise because it's about this girl named Addie LaRue. She makes a deal with the devil that, you know, she wants to be immortal. She wants to live forever. He says, okay, I'll let you do that, but you can never be remembered by anybody that you ever meet. She is living through centuries in this book and realizing how difficult life is when no one remembers you. My friend Brittany, she did a whole reading vlog on it and she was talking about how like there's just so many things that happen that you wouldn't even like think about because just so many consequences come about from no one remembering you. Like you have no place to live, blah, blah, blah. Like things don't go so well. One day, I think she goes in a bookstore and the guy working there remembers her. And obviously she's going to be like struck by love by him or feel some type of way about him because that's the first person in centuries that has even known she existed for more than two seconds. So I think they develop some sort of relationship. And I hear people saying like, it's not really like a romance. It is a romance, but like it's just dealing with the character interaction like it's just the relationship that they have friendship romance or not it's just a crazy story and I am just so excited I think it's like more of a literary fiction type of book and V.E. Schwab's writing is just so gorgeous and with a concept like this I just really think she's going to come through with it and a lot of people with similar tastes as me have been really enjoying this book and I just think it's going to be one of my new favorite books hands down the next one I bought because Timothy Chalamet is gorgeous and I used to try to stay away from the hype of him because I'm like I don't want to be basic you know but he's literally so pretty I don't even call him handsome or like hot or anything he's just a pretty person like I, it's just so angelic in the face and like just everything about him is just beauty and I've been trying to watch all of his movies he's gonna be in a movie that comes out hopefully this year maybe next year I don't know Dune by Frank Herbert. This is like a classic sci-fi novel. People have said like Star Wars was inspired by this book. There's gonna be a new movie. It's been made into a movie before, but there's gonna be like a huge one. So many famous people in it and Timothy Chalamet plays the main character and whoa, does he look good in the trailer. Like I, I'm dying over the vibes he's exuding. In that trailer, I live for it. Like, I literally love shit like this. And I do want to read the book before this movie comes out. And it actually got pushed back. And I'm low-key kind of glad about it because I need more time. It may not look big, but it has, like, Bible pages like Sarah J. Mass. So, it's actually a huge freaking book. Like, almost 700 pages. There's a whole thing about this drug, some sort of powder that the galaxy freaking is trying to get because they want to sell it. Like, if you have dibs on this drug or whatever, you control the freaking whole galaxy because everybody wants it. Everybody's in need of it. And I guess there's like only a little bit of it. There is a bunch of it on this one planet, but it's so freaking hard to get on that planet. There's so many like scary creatures and just obstacles. I think the characters are trying to get past all the obstacles of that crazy planet so they can continue to sell this mineral Mineral drug or whatever this freaking is. I just want to read it before I watch the movie because Timothy Chalamet stole my whole freaking life this year. So beautiful. The next one that I want to read is a final book in a series, of course, and it is The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. I haven't read this one yet because I read the first two on audiobook and read it physically, and I can't get the audiobook yet from my library for some reason. They just don't have it, and it really helped to read those books physically with the audio in the background. It is the third one. The first one was called The City of Brass and I really enjoyed that one. I think it's set in the 1800s in Egypt at first. The main character, Nari, lives in Egypt. She's a con woman, you know, just trying to get by. And then she comes across this djinn. He's like magical. And he says she's from this magical city and he's going to take her there. You know, that, that sounds like a regular plot, but this book is so complex. The fantasy, the magic, the world building, 
and like very complex adult fantasy novels. So it's really hard for me even to read and I read a lot of fantasy so I'm just saying like you really have to take your time with it to be able to understand what's going on because there's just so many things and I feel like sometimes the author like doesn't really explain anything and I would just have to look it up myself and like that's fine but definitely makes it harder to read. <laughs> but I'm attached to these characters at this point and there's this freaking couple that I want to be a couple. Like they're not even a couple but like I ship them and I hope that comes a thing. There's a one character that I freaking despise though and a lot of people love him and I do not understand. <laughs> The next book I want to read is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I really wish I had this one in October because it would have been perfect. This one is, I believe, a trans main character. I believe the author is also trans, so love to see it. Oh, it has the spooky vibes because it's like a romance with a ghost. He is actually trying to resurrect somebody else, but I think he accidentally resurrects a ghost of some kid from his school that he never really liked. And I think somehow there's a romance developing between them, but there's still the spooky freaking cemetery vibes. It's Latinx and uh, enemies to lovers romance because the ghost was the bad boy of the school. So I love to see everything that this book is about. Cannot wait for it. And I've heard nothing but great things. It was like instantly on the New York Times bestseller list. Everything about it is promising. So I think this is the first book that I've read before on this list. I really want to read this book again for a specific reason. That book is Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. Now I read this years ago. I had never gotten around to read Crooked Kingdom, the second one. I honestly need to reread this one if I'm going to read Crooked Kingdom because I don't really remember much. It is a heist novel. Bunch of like ragtag group of people coming together to steal something. It's fun vibes. It's like a huge booktube classic. Like people are obsessed with it. I don't think it lives up to the hype, but maybe upon rereading it, I will change my mind about that. I'm specifically wanting to reread this and the Grisha trilogy because I know the show is coming out in April and I do want to watch that show and I'd prefer to have, you know, recently read the books and then watch the show and I hope that show's gonna be good because I know there's gonna be so many people disappointed if the show's not good. Like, there's some super fans for these books and I wish I was one of them. I do plan on vlogging my experience rereading this duology and the Grisha trilogy. So, those are all 10 books that I'm really hoping to read in 2021. Maybe I'll look back on this video at the end of the year and see if I actually read these books. That would be cool to see because I probably won't do everything I said. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you're wanting to read them. What are your thoughts? Thank you so much for watching this video. Like it, comment down below. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Make sure to follow all my social medias which are linked down below and go click the bell button which is right by the subscribe button which you should already clicked and goodbye. Mm -hmm.